Hi everyone, my name is Tom Henry and I'm going to show you today how to create a dashboard in Microsoft Project. So as you can see, this is a dashboard I've already created. I've kind of put in some nice logos at the top, I've got a nice title here, some charts, as well as some tables to show various information, high level information about my project. When it comes to building out reports in Microsoft Project, there are a number of them that come out of the box. If we click on the report ribbon here, which was actually introduced to Microsoft Project in 2013, if you're using an older version, you'll need to upgrade. You can see there are a whole bunch of out of the box reports here. So dashboard, burn down charts, very common for project management. There's cost overviews, project overviews. So for the most part, you're pretty much gonna find something that you might wanna use in these out of the box ones upcoming tasks, things like that. <clears throat> well, you can see I've actually built out a pretty comprehensive schedule here of various things related to the Tokyo Olympics. This is something that I've put together. That's a bit of spare time with COVID going on. So you can see we have a pretty detailed comprehensive schedule here. And you can see I actually filtered by some resources there. Let's bring all of those back and you can see pretty comprehensive schedule. So once you've got your schedule put together, you've got resources working on it, you have a baseline in place, you've got some actual progress tracked on your project, it's gonna start becoming time when you need to report on the progress of your project. And there's no two projects that are gonna be the same, right? And there's no one size fits all. So it often becomes inevitable that you're gonna to need to build out your own dashboards in Microsoft Project. You can see I have a pretty comprehensive schedule. I'm gonna go in and start building a report. So I'm gonna show you how to do this from scratch. But what we're gonna end up doing is creating our own custom report that you can see something similar to this on the screen. How do we do it? Well, you can start from scratch or you can modify an existing report and then save it as a new name. I'm actually gonna just start from scratch so that you'll have a full understanding of how to do this. So to build a new report, we click on the report ribbon and we click new report. You can start from a pre-built one that's going to have some charts and tables in there or just from blank. For completeness today, I'm going to do from blank. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Tokyo report. Okay. You can see the name is now inherited. Tokyo report. Great. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some branding. You can pull in your own branding, whatever the case may be. Maybe you've given your project a code name or something like that, and you want to put your own logos or branding in there. Really cool idea when you're in a pretty comprehensive project or program to pull in your own branding. So um, I'm just going to use the um, Tokyo Olympics logo. It's a public image. So I'm going to click on images here. And I've actually put some on my desktop already, ready to go. Here we go. Insert that one there. So you can just insert it from your desktop just by clicking on the design ribbon. And you can see you insert an image. So for those that are familiar with Microsoft Project, it has context sensitive ribbons. So when you're in a report, you'll see that the design ribbon will light up and it's report tools, design. This one, two, three, four, five main areas that you want to play around with when you're building out your report. I've started with images. Let's do the same thing again. I can put in another image or I can just copy and paste this one. Copy and paste it like so. Or I can just pull in a new image. I'll show you that again. So we're going to pull a new image in from my desktop. And there it is. Okay. You put any image you want in there. I don't like this being quite so wide. I'm going to just trim it down a little bit. There we go. We'll put this on either side of that. Position that nicely. I can rename this report at this point if I wanted anything I like, but I like Tokyo report. I'm going to change the background color a little bit to make it stand out. Maybe I'd match that color with this one here. I could do that by um, going here, maybe more of a darker blue. There we go. That's a bit closer. And then maybe we'll do white foreground text. 
It's very similar to any other office package, so I'm not going to play around too much there. Maybe you want to make it a little bit wider. That looks quite nice. Uh, maybe we can blow that up a little bit as well. There you go. I think that looks better than the one I did before. I'm happy with that. Pull that up a little bit. I'm not that design focused, but some, some of you maybe make it look as pretty as you like. You can change the fonts, etc. Next thing I want to do, I want to pull in some data from my project schedule. That's the bit you're looking for, right? Well, there's two ways to do that. A chart or a table. Really, really simple. Very similar to when you're doing something in Excel, but it makes it much easier to do it, I think, in Microsoft Project. It pulls data directly from the schedule. And obviously, when you update the schedule, instantly the report will be updated. It's live data based on the project schedule that you have in the background. To start, I'm going to pull in a chart. I'm going to do just a standard column chart. You can recognize these probably from Microsoft Excel. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty similar. You can adjust the style of each one. I'm just going to go for a standard run of the mill clustered column chart. There we go. Pull it in over here. So what I've got here is by default my high level phases. So event planning, planning complete. Oh, that's actually a milestone. Olympic Village phase, Aquatic Center phase. Those are all of the summary tasks within my project. I want to come in here and actually I'm going to filter just for summary tasks. I want to eradicate those milestones. So I'm going to come in here and we will filter on summary tasks. Uh, uh, uh. There it is. So now I've just got my high level phases. It's removed those milestones. How did I do that? Well, as soon as you click in any of these graphics, you get the nice chart builder that comes up on the right hand side. You can reorder these columns, etc. You can add additional things in here. And I'll show you more about that. But what I want to show you for this one is the filtering. Pretty simple. I'm now going to pull in a table. To do that, just click table. You can see it's all done from the design ribbon. And click table. There we go. Straight away I've got a nice table. And what that's showing me is high level, the name of the project because we're at the project summary task outline level, which is that high, high level zero within your schedule. Telling me the start date, finish date, and the percent complete. That's some great information to have, right? Really, really good information. I like that. Anything I want to add in here is when will we scheduled to finish or scheduled to finish? Well, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in the baseline finish date. Obviously, you have to have a baseline set in your schedule or schedule for this. There we go. So we've got start, finish, percent complete, baseline finish. Well, I want the baseline finish to be to the left of percent complete. I can reorder really easily up here. Just like that, clicking around. Again, you can adjust your outline level. Do you want to see just the high level project summary or maybe you want to go a level deeper? So I'm seeing the phases. Oh, I've got those milestones in there as well. I could filter to just show me the summary tasks again in here there we go pretty nice report there so we see each phase start finish dates baseline finish i can even show variants etc you can pretty much pull in whatever you like however for this i'm going to go back to the project summary task level what am i doing here i'm not filtering i want to go to outline level project summary all right back up to the high level next thing you might want to do is give each kind of chart or type or table a title I'm going to put it in a text box so I click on the text box here draw a nice text box here and I'm going to call this one high level dates there we go uh, I can do the same thing. I can copy and paste that. Pull it over here. Put the other one. When I'm doing this, I probably want to make it the text size a little bit bigger. So it really stands out. There we go. Little tip there. You can change the colors. You can't make it bold though. Well, let me try that again. I take it back. Yes, you can. There we go. I tried doing this earlier. It didn't work. But there we go. We've got bold. 
text there. Real nice. I'm going to move that around. I'm not going to get too picky on the ordering and you know alignment of everything, but you get the idea. <clears throat> All right, next thing. Let's pull in another table. I'm going to come back to my design ribbon, table, and there we go. Now this time around, I want to pull in some resource information as opposed to tasks information. So to do this, you see here in the field list, we've got task level information. Oh, resource level information. Now I want to look at just my contractors. I've got people on here, but I've also got some contractors. Now I've actually delineated those by looking at cost resources versus work resources. Okay, so cost resources are my contractors, fixed costs. They tell me that it's going to cost me $10,000 to complete X. And they will bill me and invoice me accordingly. Those are modeled in Microsoft Project using cost resources. I want to see just my cost resources in here. To do that, I can come down, filter. You see it says all resources right now. I want just my resources cost. If you're interested in learning more about that, I do have another video and I'll pull it up on the screen now to show you about the different types of resources in Microsoft Project. Click on that link and you'll be able to take a look. All right, great. So now we have the names of our resources and when they're starting and finishing on the project. That is not what I want. I want to see how much they're charging me. Well, what we need to do is remove the finish and the start. I'm going to redo this. I want to see now cost information. So I expand and collapse these little carrots here. I want to see what's the baseline cost. What did I plan for originally? I've got another video on how to set a baseline. Take a look at that. Um, so I want to look at the baseline cost. And as you click these, they will come in the order that you click them, but you can always reorder down here as well. Baseline cost, cost, which is actually what did we what is we currently scheduled for the project to, to cost for that resource. And then the actual cost, how much have they invoiced us so far? Or how much have we spent to date? Another one is cost variance. That's another really important one. What did we plan to spend in the baseline? And what are we actually spending? So there we go. Something for pretty much any project you've got, this is really important to be able to see what are your contractors, what did we originally planned to spend? You see Big Diggers Inc., we never planned anything for them. It was a, a change order and we realized, oh, we need to spend two million on, on big uh, to dig out some stuff that we didn't anticipate. We can see that they've actually charged us 120,000 and we have uh, two million variants because we never planned for it. Slightly different with Addison Construction. We had some baseline of 800,000. What was that million? 800 million. <laughs> uh, we spent three and we have 23 left to go. Nope. Actual 23 we spent. We have a variance of 2.33 billion dollars. All right. Well, there we go. We've got some pretty big numbers there. So quickly and easily, I've been able to build a report. Again, you can pull in images, you can pull in shapes, charts, tables, text, box, text boxes. One thing I didn't do so far was the shape. Very, very simple. Maybe you want to kind of group these together so they look kind of as one. Click on the format. I can change my shape fill to be no fill. Shape outline, maybe I want to make that black. And I want to make the weight a little thicker so it really stands out. Stuff like that. You've got your data labels here. Pull those down. Like so. Looks kind of nice. Maybe I want to do another one around my high level dates. One last thing, I'm going to show you how to pull in a pie chart really quickly and easy. Not going to spend much time on this. I think you get the idea. But I wanted to show you something here. Uh, so we've got a work report. You see on the various uh, tasks for my project and the phases, what how much work is involved in each of those tasks. Kind of high level there. Let's actually take a look. Let's go to a higher level, level one. You can see 
what percentage my, com ta my percent complete my tasks are. Uh, not really what I want to see. But what I do want to illustrate is that you can add data labels just like you do in Excel. And you can adjust the name of these charts and say, call it something completely different if I wanted. Um, I can group by different things. I can filter for active tasks versus completed tasks. I can look at different outline levels. I can change the sort by. I can pull in any data element from Microsoft Project. Cost, duration, number, work, just by coming in here and doing so, like so. You can look at it resource level information as well. You see I've just switched it. All of these update instantly. So once you've got your report how you want it, you might want to save off. This is a report I, you can see in my report ribbon. It will appear under custom. Here's my Tokyo report. You may want to make this report available for other projects. Or maybe you've got a, a high level report that you want to make available to this project and maybe one other. I want to show you how to take this report and make it available for all future projects. To do that, I click on the file ribbon. I click on info. And we're going to use the organizer tool. So click organizer. What I'll see in the reports tab is a list of all of the reports that I currently have in this project. Reports available in my project schedule. I want to take my Tokyo report and make it available in my global.mpt. So that's the global template within my Microsoft project, my version of Microsoft project sitting on my desktop. I can copy it over. I can now see Tokyo report. I can close this and save it. That project, that sorry, that report will now be available in all subsequent projects that I create. If I create a new project, blank, I'm going to go to the report and see that Tokyo report. It won't have any data in it, but it's there. Pretty cool. All right, well, thank you for watching today. If you have any questions, please post some comments, and I will promise to get more videos out there very soon. Thanks very much.